Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my college football way too soon playoff predictions for next year. Now the national championship technically is taking place in January, so I guess it's 2023, but let's be honest, the season is 2022. It starts in September. I'm going to go through my top four teams, and then I'll go through some teams that just missed the cut and my reasons why they missed the cut for making the college football playoff. There are a few surprises in there. You got to spice it up a little bit. Let's go with number four, and it is Oregon. A surprise to a few people. This would be the first time a Pac-12 team makes the playoff since 2016 when Washington did it. Oregon's schedule sets up beautifully. Really no tough away games at all. They have a very talented defense with a few five stars. And how about some Pac-12 love, you know? You look at their schedule. One of the funny things I want to point out with Oregon's schedule, they play Georgia week one in what is a so called neutral site game. Their neutral site game against Georgia is taking place in Atlanta, Georgia. I just hate the SEC, man. I mean, good lord. But other than that, you take a look at their schedule. Even if they lose week one, they can very easily win out. They're going to be getting a new quarterback. Let's be honest, anything is an upgrade from Anthony Brown. I know they have a talented recruit, Ty Thompson, who was a former five-star. Now, I originally had Utah in at my number four spot as the Pac-12 team that makes it. I changed it to Oregon after looking at both of their schedules. Again, Oregon, the week one against Georgia, which is basically a road game. Game. How is it a neutral site game? The game is taking place in Atlanta, Georgia. And they're facing Georgia, yet it's a neutral site game? Come on. This is why college football is dying. It's ridiculous. But I like this Oregon team a little bit more than I like Utah. They're a little bit more talented, and they get Utah at home this year. I also think if a team from the Pac-12 is potentially, you know, potentially can make the college football playoff, you're going to hear people say, you know, a Pac-12 team hasn't made it in so long. Let's just let them in. 2016, the last time a Pac-12 team has made it in. I've got Oregon in my way too early playoff at number four. Coming in at number three, a little bit of a, a surprise to some people, the University of Miami. This team is sneaky talented. You're talking about Leonard Taylor, who's a top five you know, player in his class. You're talking about James Williams, the former five-star safety, returning superstar QB in Tyler Van Dyke. Nice head coach to inject life into their program in Mario Cristobal. I will say... To be honest, I was this close to picking Clemson over Miami in this number three spot. The thing with Clemson, I'm going to get to it. I'm just really concerned about their offense. They are returning talent. They've got such a great talent to defense, and they get Miami at home. But I wanted to be bold. You're talking about Tyler Van Dyke. That's a superstar quarterback. That's a known commodity. With Clemson, there's a lot more question marks. DJ Uilungile is a former five-star top 10 player in, the, you know, in his recruiting class. We understand he's very talented, and he's getting a year of experience. But I'll take the known commodity. Tyler Van Dyke had such a great year last year coming in midseason due to De'Aaron King's injury played great throughout the entire season one of the best quarterbacks in the ACC and he should only improve and also you got to understand the thing with Miami and getting Mario Cristobal they're going to become an attractive transfer portal definition destination they could seriously build you know get some good wide receivers they get one elite wide receiver this team is scary I've got Miami it would be the first time they've ever made the playoff they were ranked number two back in like 2017 and then they lost to Pittsburgh. That was when Pittsburgh was still bad. Uh, but I do have Miami making their debut in the college football playoff at number three, squeaking by Clemson there. Coming in at number two, no surprise to everyone. There's going to be a lot of people that have this team. It is Ohio State. Likely number one offense again. Would be very surprised if they did not have the number one offense in college football with C.J. Stroud returning, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Marvin Harrison Jr., Emeka Abuka. You've got Trevion Henderson returning. It's an absolutely loaded stacked offense and I think their offense next year could, could actually be better than it was this year with the addition of Marvin Harrison Jr. You know one of the big problems Ohio State had last year was their you know the red zone offense. You get a big body target like Marvin Harrison Jr. That's going to enable them to throw it up to him in the red zone, draw pass interference flags. I also think Ohio State playing the correct offensive linemen in their spots. I don't know what they were doing last year playing you know some tackles at the guard position 
kind of stupid. You know, when you get in the red zone, it was very tough for them to run the ball. Ohio State should be better in the red zone. This team might average 50 points a game. C.J. Stroud, I'm looking at about 55 passing touchdowns. And how about this? Ohio State, this time with an actual defensive coordinator. A lot of people don't know this, but Ryan Day made a brutal rookie mistake as a head coach, hiring Kerry Combs as the defensive coordinator with no experience. And Ohio State's actually had him as the defensive coordinator for two years. Now, because it got so bad against Oregon, they had to demote him, and they put Matt Barnes in as the defensive coordinator. These guys have no clue what they're, they're doing. There were zero adjustments made. Now Ohio State gets an actual real defensive coordinator. A lot of people overlook this fact. Ohio State has not had a legitimate defensive coordinator the past two years. They haven't. They have not. They get one. Zach Harrison is returning. That's a big get. A lot of fans are like, oh, Zach Harrison doesn't do anything. Zach Harrison has an elite pressure rate. He's a really good player. That's big news that he's returning. Ohio State should be much better on the defensive side of the ball. And we know their offense with Jackson Smith, the jig ball, all the other five-star receivers, the offensive linemen, you're looking at two stud tackles. Uh, it should be really good. Ohio State coming in at number two. And then number one, I have to do it. Um, it it's Alabama. Will Anderson, Bryce Young, Eli Ricks, the superstar transfer from, from LSU. Uh, duh. Yeah, I mean, if you're not putting Alabama in your way too early playoff, you're just hoping. Because Alabama literally returns the two best players at the two most important positions. You've got the quarterback position, the Heisman Trophy winner, Bryce Young, and you've got the pass rusher position, which is arguably the second most important position in college football. The pass rusher position, Will Anderson returns. And then you've also got the young gun on the other side, Dallas Turner. This team is absolutely loaded. Again, if you were to seriously ask like 100 people, 100 college football fans, legitimately fill out your college football playoff for next year, not being a joke, you know, being normal. I think, what, 97, 98 of them would have Alabama in the playoff. Their schedule sets up nicely. They do have an away game, I believe, week two at Texas and Quinn Ewers, so that should be interesting. But in terms of them losing that game, I would be shocked with Bryce Young and his experience and that Alabama defense, which should be even more improved. I would be shocked if they will they would lose that game. I do like that they're playing a non-conference game that's not a neutral site game. I will say that, but I do have Alabama. So those are my top four way too early playoff teams. Oregon from the Pac-12, Miami from the ACC, Ohio State from the Big Ten, and then Alabama from the SEC. Now as for the teams who just missed making my way too early playoff, we've got Michigan. They lose too much to reload at that level, but a New Year's Six Bowl is possible. So what I mean by that is Michigan is a good recruiting program. They're top 10, sometimes top 7 in a good year, but they're not recruiting to the level to where they can reload and continuously make the playoffs every year. You're losing two stud pass rushers. You're losing a good safety in Daxton Hill. Maybe the quarterback gets upgraded a little bit with J.J. McCarthy getting more experience and starting over Cade McNamara. Maybe that happens, but in terms of you know being able to reload to the level of an Ohio State, to the level of an Alabama, to a level of to, to the level of Georgia, they're not in that recruiting bracket. So Michigan, they have a chance to make a New Year's Six Bowl. They should upgrade their quarterback a little bit. Jim Harbaugh, you know, this is obviously with me expecting them to retain Jim Harbaugh. I know there's been some rumors about him going to the NFL, but if, if he comes back, I could still see Michigan in a New Year's Six Bowl. The tough scenario and the elephant in the room, Michigan has to go to Columbus this year to face Ohio State. So in terms of winning the Big Ten East, that is going to be very tough in Columbus against that Ohio State team. The next team, Georgia, it is insanely hard hard to repeat, but it is still a respectable pick if you pick Georgia and make the playoff. So I really don't have a great reason why I'm not picking Georgia in the playoff. I think if you do pick Georgia and make the playoff, you're completely well within your right. But as for them winning the national title next year, guys, it is so hard, literally almost impossible to repeat as national champions. You should not be picking Georgia to win it. Making the playoff, that's respectable. I just don't think they go back to back with two SEC teams making it in back-to-back -back years, although you could argue that could force their hand in expanding the playoff to 12 teams. I certainly think Alabama's a lock to make the playoff, or as a close to a lock as you can get next year, so I'm not going to have two SEC teams in the playoff. That's kind of why I'm leaving Georgia out. Also, question marks with their quarterback situation, but let's be real. Georgia, their neutral site game against Oregon, I mean, seriously, in a, it's, in Atlanta, it's in Atlanta, Georgia. What are we doing? 
what are we doing? Georgia, I have just on the outside looking in. Next, we've got Texas A&M. They are going to be receiving a multi-year bull ban, so we do not have to talk about them. Then Clemson. So this is the team that I was very close to putting in the playoff. Defense is absurdly talented. You're going to be hearing about guys like Miles Murphy, like Brian Breezy, like uh, Trenton Simpson, the linebacker from Georgia. They have a crazy talented defense. Their 2020 recruiting cl cl class is no joke, and all of those guys have experience now. The big question mark, it's just so many questions on the offensive side of the ball. I've said this before. Clemson's offense in 2021 was broken. It was broken. There was something just so wrong with it. They've got a, super, a really good all-purpose back in Will Shipley. DJ Uilungile, we know the story. He's a former five-star, but just something was not working. They are at Notre Dame in one of their non-conference games. That should be a really good game. Uh, but Clemson, so close. They're on the cusp. I think they could beat Miami at home. Obviously, you know, the ACC is wide open. You've got Pittsburgh coming back to the pack a little bit, losing Kenny Pickett. You've got Wake Forest, who's still going to be there with Sam Hartman, but they're no huge threat. I mean, Clemson is still going to have the most talented team in the ACC. So, you know, this is a big year for Clemson. We'll see what they can do. We'll see if they can kind of right the ship on the offensive side of the ball and go back to the college football playoff. And then you've got Notre Dame. They have a brutally hard schedule. Their first game is at Ohio State and a first-year head coach. They're also going to have to replace Jack Cohn, who was a veteran quarterback who actually played really well for Notre Dame. Um, and again, you, your first game is at Ohio State. You're very likely going to be 10, 12, 14 point underdogs in that game. So you're very likely to start 0-1. You've also got a game at USC later in the season. Caleb Williams, will, you know, you'll probably be seeing him with Lincoln Riley. You've also got a game mid-season at home against Clemson, which should be tough as well. So it's a brutal schedule for Notre Dame. And Notre Dame, you got to feel bad for them. You got to feel bad for their fans. It's just nobody takes them seriously right now because they can't win a New Year's Six Bowl. It's unfortunate. They've made the playoffs twice. They got blown out both times. Nobody's really taking them seriously. I haven't seen many people predict them in the way too early playoffs. Um, and it's just the schedule this year is going to really prevent them from reaching the playoffs, in my opinion. And then you've got Utah. Now, this, this was my original Pac-12 winner. This was my original playoff team. They have a returning quarterback. They've got a superstar returning running back. But they do have a tough schedule. And there is a bit of a talent question mark with Utah. They are losing their stud linebacker, Devin Lloyd. He's going to probably be a mid to late first round pick in the NFL draft. But again, really good coach in Kyle Winningham. It is a winnable conference, but the schedule, it's a little tough. I believe they're on the road at USC. They're definitely on the road at Oregon. That's a tough schedule, just the way it worked out this year for Utah. You're going to have to win some tough road games. That's why I have Oregon over them. And then a little bit of a talent question mark. They're returning Cameron Rising. That's good veteran presence. That's good experience. They've got a good running back in Thomas who set all kinds of records for Utah returning. That was just recently announced, so good for him. But Utah right now on the outside looking in. They were originally in for me, but they are out of it. So guys, those are my top four playoff teams. Once again, I've got Oregon, I've got Miami, I've got Ohio State, and then I've got Alabama, Ohio State, and Alabama, pretty much a given in anyone's way too early rankings, unless you think Michigan is somehow going to, you know, rip, repeat of last year, uh, you know, Ohio State and um, Alabama are pretty much universally recognized as they will probably be making the playoffs. They'll probably be one and two in the AP poll, unless Georgia uh, if, unless people want to rank Georgia number one due to their national championship. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.